Thanks for the 3,000 likes on the previous video, and thanks to everyone who supported the channel financially. I really appreciate your support for the channel. Therefore, I am continuing to upload this story, and I hope that this video will reach 3,000 likes as well, and everyone who watches the video, write a comment. This helps the channel to reach everyone, finally, step by step. One person entered the alley where the trap was set. That person was Ryu. At that moment, a wicked smile formed on Ju Sung Tak's lips. His plan was as follows. As soon as the target got within ten steps, the plan was to detonate the hidden body inside the clothing collection bin. At that very moment, as the guy stumbles in pain, he'll cast a curse of terror upon him, making him kneel in fear. Afterward, Finishing the job with a dagger to the throat would be a straightforward affair. Then he said, But I don't intend to end it quickly. I'll play with you as much as possible. And there was a price to pay for crossing him, and I would make sure it was paid off. With these thoughts in mind, Ju Sung Taik stood in the alley, eagerly awaiting the buyer's approach. And he said to himself excitedly, Yes, just a little closer, just five more steps. Unaware of the impending danger, Ryu continued walking towards him, and the gap between them was shrinking rapidly. And Ju Sung Taik continued counting four steps, three steps, two steps. Now, just one more step and... But suddenly Ryu stopped with just one step to go. So it was no surprise that Ju Sung Taik's expression twisted in frustration, and he said to himself, what on earth? Why did he suddenly stop? Now there is a bit of distance between the two to have a conversation. But Ryu remained at a distance, shouting loudly. Excuse me, are you the seller? He said, yes, I am. Ryu inquired, what are you doing over there? Aren't we going to make a deal? Seeing the Ryu's gestures as if calling him over, Ju Sung Taik couldn't help but be baffled and said to himself, Damn it, if he takes just one more step, he'll be within the blast radius. Despite the Ryu's signals, Ju Sung Taik couldn't move any closer. And he said to himself, if I get any closer, I'll be caught in the explosion too. And the corpse's explosion spared no one, friend or foe alike. Then he added, of course, I could abandon the idea of the corpse explosion and opt to approach and cast the Curse of Terror, a simpler method of subduing their target. But that would be far too dull, above all else. That's not the plan I had in mind. Then Ryu inquired, What are you doing? Aren't you coming over? He hesitated and said, Um, would you mind coming this way? I have a leg injury. And he said to himself, even though it sounded lame, there was no other choice. Just one step closer. However, the other party seemed glued to the spot as if they had glue on their feet. And instead of getting closer, Ryu crossed his arms and wore a displeased expression and said, Oi, do you think anyone's without pain in their legs? If it hurts you, it hurts me even more after coming all this way down. Ju Sung Taik said, I have a disability, that's why it's hard for me to move. Ryu said, a disability? Both your legs look perfectly fine to me. Seeing that the buyer hasn't shown any intention to move, Ju Sung Taik said angrily. That damn guy, does he know what he's doing? No, it couldn't be. Who would think there was a bomb inside a clothes collection bin? But why won't he just take that step and stop arguing? Ryu, still standing and making their discomfort known, suddenly exclaimed, You damn jerk! Don't you want to make a deal with me? Ju Sung Taik inquired, What? What's going on? Ryu replied, You're hesitating, so it must be true. You were trying to lure me in and rob me, right? That's why you keep insisting I come inside, isn't it? Right? You damn scumbag! It seemed like there was some misunderstanding, but it was incredibly perplexing to listen to. And Ju Sung Tak said to himself, When was the last time he'd received such a verbal lashing in his life? Ugh, stay calm. Don't get tangled up in this guy's pace. Ju Sung Tak had to do something to clear up the misunderstanding. After all, one more step forward, and everything would be over, and he could make this guy kneel at his feet. Then he said to Ryu, Well, you seem to be misunderstanding something. It's not like that at all, Ryu inquired. It's not like that, you damn jerk, he said. You're speaking rather rudely, Ryu said. Whether it's rude or not, you're still a scumbag. Do you think I'd say nice things to a guy who tried to set up a false deal and rob me? Ju Sung Taik said, I've never lied, okay? Look, feeling unfairly accused. Ju Sung Taik reached into his inventory, and he retrieved the fragment of immortal skin he had listed for sale. Only then did the other party's confrontational stance start to soften. And Ryu said, Huh? You actually have it? Internally, Ju Sung Taik couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief, and said to himself, 
Good. With this, I can lure that guy to come closer. But he was confused and surprised and said to himself, something was amiss. Just moments ago, the buyer had been cursing and suddenly he was smiling amiably. What's going on? Why is this guy laughing all of a sudden? In that instant, it felt as if a gust of wind had passed and then sensation vanished from his arm. And his arm, the one holding the material item, was now lying beneath Ju Sung Tyke's foot. Then he screamed in pain. The scream was delayed by the pain that surged in. Ju Sung Taik tried to clear his mind to understand the situation and said to himself, when did, when did he get this close? There was quite a distance just a while ago, wasn't there? Turning his head, he saw the person with a weapon in hand. And when he turned back, the smiling figure was still there. Then he said, but the words came out of his mouth with difficulty. T2... Ryu said, you're trying to say there are two of them? No, it's just one. Hearing these words, Ju Sung Taik looked back and saw that the person who had been there earlier had disappeared in the blink of an eye. All that remained was the guy holding the weapon. It was like witnessing a ghost. But in reality, Ryu used a clone to divert his attention, but Ju Sung Taik had no way of knowing that. Ju Sung Taik inquired, what happened? Ryu said, do I need to explain that too? And with a smirk, Ryu casually picked up the material item that had fallen from Ju Sung Taik's severed arm and placed it in their inventory as if it were their own. Ju Sung Taik was left speechless, unable to comprehend what was happening, and said angrily, This! This damn bastard! Then he shouted belatedly and used the curse of terror on Ryu. It was the first skill shamans learned when they advanced, a skill that instilled fear in the opponent. And Ju Sung Taik had easily subdued most of his enemies using this skill. As soon as he cast the curse, the target would shiver in fear without fail. But something unexpected happened, and the system message has appeared. The opponent resisted the fear, failed to cast the curse of terror. Ju Sung Taik was surprised and said, What? A failure? And he wondered if he had seen it wrong. It was a message he had never seen once in the six rounds he had played. Then Ryu said, don't be surprised. With an 18% success rate, it's only natural for it to fail most of the time. Ju Sung Taik asked, What are you? Before he could question further, he was struck on the chin with a punch. He had nearly reached a near-death state, but, but suddenly a warm sensation enveloped him, and both internal and external injuries healed completely. He inquired, What? What just happened? Ryo said indifferently. I healed you. I wanted to beat you up a bit more. Then Ryo gave him a punch. And before Ju Sung Taik could even turn his head back, the next punch landed. A series of one-two punches made him stagger backward, and he collapsed. He nearly lost consciousness, but the pain faded and he recovered once again. And he said to himself, This, this fucking bastard! Ju Sung Taik, who had no idea why this was happening, was getting beaten by the other person again and again. Despite having a weapon, he was beaten by Ryu with his fists alone. Then he said to himself, damn it, if I could only use the curse of terror. The cooldown for the curse of terror was one minute, and he muttered under his breath, just one more minute, damn it. But even moments that feel like they would last forever eventually pass. For Ju Sung Taik, who had held on for so long, an opportunity finally arose. And the system message appeared, cool down for the curse of terror has reset. Then he shouted angrily, you're finished, you damn bastard. But before he used the skill, Ju Sung Tech was momentarily blinded, disoriented by the overwhelming pain surging from his eyes. And Ryu said, your parents, who brought a dirty bastard like you into the world, must be shedding blood tears of despair in the afterlife, just like you are now, Ju Sung Taik said angrily. Ugh, you son of a bitch! How dare you fool me? Then he was sent sprawling by a kick from Ryu, and he said to himself, Did that guy deliberately poke my eyes during the cooldown? Nah, couldn't be. Could that guy possibly know that eye contact was required to use the curse of terror? More likely, it was just a lucky hit. But damn it, it hurts. It hurts, you bastard. What should I do? And he asked himself, is there truly no way to defeat this guy? Then a single idea sprang to mind. And he said to himself, didn't I still have one more skill? That bastard. He underestimated me too much. And even if I perished, I'd take that guy down with me. And with unwavering resolve, he activated his skill. Corpse explosion. And he shouted, die! 
Son of a bitch, at that moment, the explosion rocked the alley. Fortunately, Ryu escaped to a house before the explosion. And he said, phew, I almost met my end because of this bastard. And he glanced at the unconscious Ju Sung Taek in one corner and said, you crazy bastard, you can't even see what's in front of you and you're using corpse explosion. If it weren't for Ryu's ability to read thoughts, both of them could have easily become mere pieces of flesh. And Ryu added, Sure, he's a scumbag deserving of death a hundredfold, but there's a way to make use of him. The rune he possesses for item drops is quite valuable. In fact, Ju Sung Taek's in-game nickname was Stupid Idiots, just like Ma Kyung Rock, also known as Heavenly Demon, who vied for the second and third spots in the previous zone rankings. However, teaming up with a serial killer posed a problem. Then Ryu said, I don't intend to take him all the way to round 20, but I can utilize him to help defeat the boss before then. And the drop rune, as its name suggested, significantly boosted item drop rates. It was especially effective at increasing the chances of boss-level creatures dropping special items by tenfold. So, if the base drop rate is 10%, this rune turns it into an incredible 100%. That's how he managed to extract legendary materials from the High Orc earlier. Then Ryu said, if I use his rune wisely, it could prove beneficial. After all, Hadn't he already listed legendary materials on the PPL market? And given his skills, he was bound to offer even more valuable materials in the future. But the issue lies in him being a serial killer, and leaving him as he was felt ethically troubling, considering he could potentially harm innocent people. Then with an evil smile, Ryu said, However, that doesn't mean there's no solution. Guys, please don't forget to write comments and click like and subscribe.